This is Ryan Elliott for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. I'll be joined by European featherweight champion Jordan Gill. Jordan, we've just seen Josh Rankin stop Kiko Martinez in seven rounds. IBF featherweight world champion. Just get your initial reaction to that performance from Josh Rankin. Kiko's teak tough. He, he's battle hardened. He's a warrior. Proving it time and time again. So, yeah, he got up and made a good fight of it. But in the end, Josh was a bit too fresh, a bit too good. And I think the ref made the right call in the seventh. I was going to say, Jordan, you know, Kiko looked as good as done in the first round and then again we saw these powers of recovery. How shocked were you that he just seemed to find his feet back under him and back in a couple of rounds? Nothing in boxing shocks me anymore. We've seen it all now. Uh, no, yeah, Josh, Josh Ryan really, really hit him with a good shot, but Kiko's so tough. I knew once he got into the fight, once he got a foothold and, and gained a little bit of momentum, he'd be all right, and, and he did. Um, uh, but, you know, it, it proved a little bit too little too late. Obviously, the cut, the knockdown, you know, it was a tough fight. Uh, but it, I think I think both men can, can go home and say that they have had a good fight tonight. And, and Josh Ronington's two-time world champion now. So, fair play. Credit where credit's due. He, he's earned his stripes. The last word on Kiko before we come on to Josh. If that is it for him and we expect him to retire after this fight, he kind of alluded to it before the fight. What a career to be proud of and look back on. Oh, 100%. You know, he's been all over the world. He's boxed the best fighters in the world and in the division. You know, he's done it all, mate. He's two-time world champion. He's had two fights with Carl Frampton, two big fights with Josh Warrington. He's boxed Gary Russell Jr. in America. You know, what a career he's had. And he's, he's Spanish, Spain's best fighter of all time. So, you know, he, he, he can be revered. I don't think he'll ever have to buy a pint in, in Spain again or a paella, whatever, whatever they have over there. Your mate Lee Wood was up on the ring there afterwards, the kind of talk of that being a potential fight, stadium fight for the summer. I know Josh wants his stateside fight, but is that the most logical fight to make? I think it is for all of us, but probably not for Josh Warrington. I think Josh Warrington wants to fight in the States. Um, I think he'll, he'll avoid the Lee Wood fight just because stylistically, um, I'm, in my opinion, I think stylistically Lee Wood's all wrong for him. Uh, I think he's too powerful and too good, and I think he'd knock Josh Warrington out. That's my opinion. I might be wrong, but um, yeah, that's my opinion. And, and I think Josh probably knows he can have an easier fight in America and, and make a lot of dough and give his fans an away day. And, you know, he's earned, he's earned that right. He's two-time world champion. He's, he's done it. He, he, he can sail off to the sunset if he wanted to now. Quick update on you. Obviously, we see you recovering from, from your injuries from the Guerfi fight. Be honest, how many times have you watched it back? I've not actually watched it back once. I've watched the highlights back, but I can't watch that fight until I'm going into the gym the next day um, because otherwise it would just annoy me because I want to work on my mistakes straight away. Um, so I'll watch it back. I'll get back in the gym. Um, I've got a couple of weeks until I can start doing drills and like little footwork drills and stuff like that. So I'll be, I'll be back soon. I've had a hand operation, a little bone fusion uh, in my hand. So I'll be good to go uh, for August, hopefully a defence of the European title in August. How did the feeling compare of you having your, your rocky moment there, that stoppage, to watching your mate Lee Wood do, do an incredibly similar thing? It was the best fight I've ever seen. Like, it was unbelievable. I was up on my feet. I, was, I, I think there's, a, there's a, st picture, a still picture of me when he knocked him down the 11th. Me just screaming, like, ringside, literally as far as I am away from you, from the ring. And it was, yeah, it was incredible. It was, it was the best fight I've ever seen. Uh, and I'm so proud of him. He, you know, we've both done it the hard way. We've both come up, uh, had struggles, blood, sweat and tears. I've seen the blood, I've seen the sweat. I've seen plenty of tears from us both, mate. Um, uh, no one knows how hard it's been, you know what I mean? I remember when, when he boxed Gavin McDonnell in Hull uh, all them years ago for the British title. And, um, you know, he, he got beat that night. And it was just me and him left. Um, like, everyone left us and he said to me earlier on in the night, he said, you know, if you weren't there that night, I don't know what I would have done. And, you know, I've had hard times, these are hard times. We brought each other up and, you know, between us, we won British Commonwealth European and World Titles. So, you know, it shows you that if you're tough, you can stick it out and, and, and you, you believe in yourself, then you can get to that level. And, and, you know, he's gone on, he's won a world, world, world title. He's going to unify the division, uh, hopefully. And uh, I'm, I'm a couple of steps behind him, so, we're all both going to get there, and what a story at the end of our both both of our careers. We can get to the end of our careers and say, look what we've done. British there, there's the European there, there's the two world titles. We've both done it. Uh, we've both unified the divisions, whatever. Um, it's going it's to be epic, mate. And uh, when we're wrinkled old granddads, we can uh, tell a few tales. Jordan, it's late. You've done a lot of media tonight, so thank you for speaking to Boxing Social and Safe Travel Talk. Thanks, Alex.